Mark Andreessen has a habit of publishing essays that set the tech and business world alight. His latest, It's Time to Build, is no exception. In this conversation, we're going to chat about what it means to build in and for a new world. We're joined by three exceptional guests. Matt Rossick is an investor and chairman and co-founder of Block, uh, and also someone I had the privilege of speaking to earlier this morning. Emin Gunsairer is the CEO of Alva Labs, and Kevin Werbach is a professor of legal studies and business ethics at Wharton. Welcome. Um, hey, so, everybody. so we're obviously here at a at a real inflection point, not just with the having, um, but also in history. Um, Bitcoin emerged from the last great financial crisis. What do you think is going to come out with the, uh, out of this one? Uh, maybe Matt, do you want to kick us off? Uh, sure. Uh, thanks for having me, and good to see uh, a lot of friendly faces here. Um, the the uh, the world was pressure tested over the last couple months uh, in a way that nobody's like financial model or um, mental model would have anticipated. It's uh, every supply chain um, money flows in terms of how the, the government uh, dispersed funds, uh, communications, the internet, um, the way we collaborate, the way we communicate. Uh, every single thing got pressure tested in the weirdest way possible. Um, and I think that is that pressure test and creating that, that muscle memory to say, well, how do I now uh, build and change and uh, adapt and react to this is the real question. And, and we see lots of opportunity that comes out of that. Um, we see, on one hand, all this, this cost, this calamity, this uh, human life uh, on one hand, and to say, uh, I never want to see this happen as badly again. And so what do we put in place in terms of process and systems and protocols, um, both kind of uh, workflow and, and code-wise, to um, uh, at least temper that the next time around. And so, you know, s some of the, um, uh, the discussion going into this um, uh, panel was uh, Mark Andreessen's A um, uh, Time to Build, or in the crypto sense, A Time to build -all, and uh, and really think about how we um, look at uh, money flows going forward, supply chains going forward, identity, um, and just uh, how we do things uh, to create more resiliency in our systems. We always, you know, uh, we're, we're going through this in incredible economic expansion over the last decade, uh, but then we get grinded to a halt uh, to our knees in many ways, and we realize that we're not that resilient. Um, there's resilience in, in, uh, in humanity, no question about it, but our systems uh, need a lot of work, need a lot of help, and uh, there's a lot of 100x opportunities that come out the other end of this. Goon, do you want to uh, give the question a shot? Uh, sure. Um, let's see. I have, a, I think, two things to say, maybe, yeah, two big points to make on this front. Uh, number one, uh, we're seeing well, play out in front of our very eyes exactly what played out in 2008. The incumbents get rewarded. The, uh, the, those people who are uh, intermediaries, uh, their positions are protected. And, you're, and in fact, they, they get the special treatment, even though uh, they don't have the most, basics, uh, the most basic of all financial security measures not taken. We're seeing giant conglomerations uh, employing hundreds of thousands of people, it turns out that they are really not uh, able to weather uh, a, a short duration downturn in the economy, and um, and they're laying people off the day after the very first sign of a of a downturn. So uh, and yet they are being protected. People who never pay taxes, they're being protected. So the uh, the kinds of forces at play reveal the true nature of power. Uh, the money is not being given to the taxpayers, the workers, they're being, it's being given out to corporations to, to protect the current hierarchy. And this is something that we're going to see time and time again. And, um, and disruption is called for. And it's time to push aside these people who get, uh, who get the lion's share of the wealth in the economy and uh, replace them with better structures and with fewer intermediaries. That's one. And two, uh, to Mark's point, Mark Andreessen's point that got us all together here, uh, he has a fascinating essay 
And the essay makes a point that I have found in my personal life to be true, that um, an economy, kind of like a regular person, goes through phases. And there are phases of, of expansion, of growth, and also phases of downturn. And I found that in my personal life that the only way to get through these tough times is by building things, by creating things. And the same is true for the economy. I think any economist will tell you that uh, the path to real wealth is through productivity, through doing things that you could not do before. Sure, we can play games in a closed economy where I try to claw a little bit from another competing uh, project or a competing effort, but those are zero sum games. And where the real game is at in the long term, we're not all dead in the long term. Uh, we, we actually make money in the long term by taking the world to a better place than it was before, by creating new things that bring us wealth. Kevin, what, what about you? Uh, what do you think is going to come out of this uh, strange moment? Yeah, I'll be something of a contrarian on, th on this. Uh, Mark Andreessen is a brilliant guy, and you know his, his Bitcoin essay in 2014 was, was incredibly important to uh, appreciation of the potential of the technology as well as the, the software he's eating the world one. The build thing that he just wrote is one of the worst things that he's ever published. Um, first of all, the, the notion that the problem we have is just complacency and that's why we don't have nice things in the West really it doesn't square with reality. But in terms of what we're talking about here, it's always a good time to build. I mean, people in the crypto world have been building for 10 years. Um, the whole community is about building new things. And certainly there is great opportunity to build radical and transformative things in the time after a crash. I started a tech conference business in 2002, which was the pit of the crash after the dot-com bubble. And it didn't take much. Everyone there at the time could see things were cheap, opportunity was great, technology was going to come back, there was a future. The problem was just if you had lost all your money in dot-com stocks, or if you had a big successful company that was cratering, you weren't in a position. You didn't have that flexibility, that freedom to build something new. So those of us that did, those of us who were lucky enough um, to be willing to create something in that new environment had a tremendous opportunity. That is certainly true right now. And that is certainly going to be true when we get through to the other side of this. But honestly, the crypto world has been trying to build crazy new and radical things for a while. The challenges are really the same as they have always been in this space. The challenges are, can systems be built that scale? Can systems be built that um, are consistent with legal and governance regimes? Can systems be built that are trustworthy? It all comes back to trust. And yes, there are some people at the margin who be, will be more willing to trust something that seems a little scary and new, like uh, a decentralized blockchain-based system today. But, but that's always been the challenge. And, and I think really, yes, there's a need for people in the crypto world to redouble what they're doing. Uh, but it, it's not that this is something that just came about now because of COVID-19. Well, Kevin, I'm going to put you on the spot and start with you for this last uh, lightning round, which is uh, two longs and a short coming out of this moment. Two longs and a short. Um, I, you know, I, I, um, it, it all depends on your time horizon. Um, and I think that uh, crypto assets have not yet proven that um, they can get beyond the uh, manipulation and the um, avoidance, uh, re you know, regulatory arbitrage, and the illicit activity. I think they need to, I think they will, and I think that they can. Uh, but I think in the short term, that's the short. And in the, in the long term, it's a long. I'm not going to predict particular companies. The, you know, the long is anyone, um, you know, in, in the, the famous words of the song, freedom is another word for having nothing left to lose. The long are those who can actually afford right now, personally and financially, to invest for the long term. If you're in that bucket, you're in great shape. Goon, uh, two shorts and a long can be literal, can be conceptual. You take the reins. I see. Um, let's see. So I think uh, Kevin hit the nail on the head when he identified the problems that blockchains face. They face these issues of scale, compliance, and, uh, and he's absolutely right that they haven't really proven themselves. I've put all my time and effort into one big, uh, what I think is a big breakthrough. Um, and at Ava Labs, we're building a new coin called Ava that actually addresses the scale and the regulatory compliance 
the legal foundations, and the governance problems found in blockchains. So I'm really excited about the opportunity. So when it comes to a long, it's very clear where my time and effort uh, is going. When it comes to shorts, oh, actually, I should mention, I'll, I'll do two longs, two longs and a short. Um, my second long would be any of crypto. I suspect that with the recent activity that we have seen from uh, the economy, what happened is we put a lot of kindling around the around dying fire. And that kindling is going to catch fire. And uh, Kevin is surrounded by that fire about to come later on this summer in his background. And I think uh, there's so much uh, free floating money that um, it's bound to try to go into every asset class that's out there that doesn't require much scrutiny to go into. So not real estate. And that's going to be my short uh, commercial real estate for sure. Um, and uh, that's my short. But long is any asset that's easy to buy. Um, and uh, on this side, we already are seeing an enormous fluffing up of stocks uh, far beyond where they should be. At some point where people are going to realize that these things are way too fluffed up, that the PE ratios can only be so high. And we're going to see that money go into all of crypto across the board. And among crypto, uh, there will be some coins that uh, rise above the fold because of the team, the ideas and the execution. Matt, very quickly, lightning fast, two longs and a short, and then we'll wrap the session. Yeah, I guess I would echo what uh, my panelists, uh, fellow panelists have mentioned. Um, I, I still think, you know, a Bitcoin uh, over the long term is an incredible uh, generational opportunity, not only for investors, but also for entrepreneurs building around that ecosystem. Uh, we're 10 years-ish uh, into the ballgame, and we still have a lot more to build everything from um, institutional, industrial, and decentralized mining uh, to the exchanges, to the wallets, uh, just on Bitcoin, the highest market cap piece. Um, on one hand, it's got, gotten a lot better than it was over the last uh, five years, but from an institutional uh, basis um, and, and really moving the needle for crypto, we still have a lot more to do. And, and think about the scaled platforms, they're all measured in months and maybe a year or two in terms of longevity, whether that's custody or wallets or exchanges. And you could say, well, you know, uh, some of the exchanges in Asia have been around for a long time. Uh, but in terms of the regulatory uh, framework of institutional money coming in, um, I think it's really got to hit its stride here uh, soon. Um, all right. Matt, I'm so sorry. Other, we're, we're, we're We've run out of time. I'm I'm being okay. pulled, but uh, everyone go follow oh, Matt on Twitter to make sure that, that you <laughs> get these insights. Uh, I could have this conversation all night. Listen, all, all you guys, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, I had a great time talking. All Thank set. you so much Thanks, for having guys. us.